Hey gang, today we're going to take what we did with tables of values yesterday and apply it to some real life functions. So functions can be used to help solve real world problems. So determine the functions needed in each scenario below, then complete the corresponding table. So George keeps a table to determine how much he should pay his employees before taxes. Complete the table and write an equation that'll help George. So let's start with the first two to create the slope. 270 to 288 is increasing by 18. 30 to 2 is increasing by 2. So our slope, remember, is change in y over change in x, or 18 over 2, which is equal to 9. So we have y equals 9x plus b. So now if we plug in one of those corresponding pairs, let's start with that 30 and 270, we can find the b value. So 270 equals 9 times 30 plus b. So 270 equals 270 plus b, because 9 times 3 is 27, keep the 0. Subtract 270, subtract 270, and b equals 0. So that means our equation is just y equals 9x, which means this is a proportional relationship. And we could check it. If we did 30 times 9, we'd get 270. If you do 32 times 9, you should get 288. And 36 times 9 would be 324. So then we could finish up the table. If we do 40 times 9, we get 360. And if we do 48 times 9, well, 9 times 8 is 72, carry the 7. 9 times 4 is 36, plus 7 is 43. So it would be $432 for 48 hours. All right, so we've completed the table. Now we have to finish this last part. It says if George pays an employee $225, how many hours did they work? So paying is the salary. Therefore, that is the Y. Number of hours is the X. So we're going to do 225 equals 9X divide by 9. And x equals, well, 9 goes into 22 twice, which is 18. And I've got 4 left over. And 9 goes into 45 five times. So the answer is 25 hours. All right, let's take a look at another example. Number 2, Janet keeps track of her track phone bill. Complete the table and write an equation that will help Janet. So again, we start by creating our slope. So 32 to 33 is increasing by 1. 100 to 150 is increasing by 50. So our slope, or change in y over change in x, equals 1 over 50. So I want to change that to a decimal because we're talking about money here. So we can do 1 divided by 50, and that's 2 cents. So we have y equals 2 cents of x plus b. Now remember, number of minutes is our x, the bill amount is our y, because x is what we call the independent variable, and y is the dependent variable. The cost of the bill is dependent on the number of minutes that she uses on her track phone. So now we're going to plug in 132, 100 for the x and 32 for the y. So 32 equals 2 plus b, because 2 cents times 100 is going to be $2. Subtract the 2, and b equals 30. So our final equation is y equals 2 cents x plus 30. So that means her bill is going to be $30 if she doesn't use any minutes at all. But for every minute she uses on the phone, it increases by 2 cents cost per minute. And starting bill. Okay, so now we have to figure out the bottom part. It says if Janet is billed $50, how many minutes did she use? So we plug in that 50 minute or $50, but we got to figure out where that goes. $50 is the bill amount, not the number of minutes. Bill amount is y, so we plug in 50 for y equals 0.02 x plus 30, subtract 30, so 20 equals 0.02x, divide by 2 cents, divide by 2 cents. Now, 20 divided by 2 cents, I'm sure we could do in our head, but let's just check it out. 20 divided by 0.02 is 1,000. 
So we have x equals 1,000 or final answer, 1,000 minutes. So if she uses 1,000 minutes, her bill will be $50. Okay, so you're going to try three and four on your own or with a partner. Make sure you're checking in with me to be sure you've got the right answer before moving on to your exit ticket and your homework.